Hello everyone and happy Halloween. This is my October wrap up part two with all the books that I read in the second half of October of which there are a lot and unfortunately I do have to make this video as quick as possible because somebody ate my computer charger. So uh, I have to uh, talk really really fast about an insane amount of books because I read like 20 books this month. I basically read more in the second half even than I did in the first half and that was already a lot. So the spirit bears its teeth. This is about a trans boy in olden day England and uh, except that in this universe um, people, a lot of people are born with purple eyes uh, which gives them basically the ability to communicate with spirits. Um, so not only is our um, our main character being perceived as the gender that he is not. But also he has to basically try to escape getting married and stuff because all women are good for in this universe basically um, according to the men who run things uh, is having children that also have purple eyes if they have purple eyes basically um they don't think they don't stop to think that maybe women can do all the stuff that the men can do like no they literally just think like oh she has purple eyes good we need to marry her off so she can make more purple eyed people um which is really stupid um so imagine that on top of just the patriarchy and how so against women society was back then as if it's not still now but it really was back then and on top of that being a boy too so like what the hell so our main character gets uh, sent to an insane asylum for girls uh, with with veil sickness, which is not even a sickness. Um, it's totally made up, but people really believe that and it's really dumb. Um, but this book was so incredibly good. Um, I loved the uh, the main character and his uh, drive to kind of get out of it and like he was he's so smart and everything. Um, and then also just the messages in here about like how people who just b legitimately believe this like stuff that people in power feed them are every bit as dangerous as the people who are in power feeding them this and all of that and anyway this book is so so good please read it. The Killing Moon by N.K. Jemisin. Um, this is actually not the first time that I've tried to read this book. I feel like I just have a really hard time getting into this one. Um, so I did read the whole thing but ask me if I remember anybody's name or anything. Like, I don't know. So I love her books, but this one was just not for me. City of Chairs, City of Chairs, City of Stairs by Robert Jackson Bennett. Uh, this is a book about basically um, buried history, um, banished gods, all of that. Um, it's basically about just some people trying to uncover all of this stuff. It starts off reading a lot like Babel by R.F. Kuang in that it's so at a distance. It feels like you're reading a gosh darn textbook and all of that. But um, halfway through the story, we suddenly get like this dude getting uh, having to go and fight this like octopus starfish thing and he gets swallowed by it and there's hell inside of it. Um, and then he like cuts it open to get out. Um, it's like so bizarre, something out of a really weird dream. But overall, yeah, so the first half was really, really hard to get through um, because it really felt like I was reading a textbook or something. But it definitely really picked up um, halfway through. But anyway, um, this is definitely not as fast of a read as his other books though. Fourth World by Lissa Chiavari. Uh, this is about a boy who uh, lives in a far future or a kind of a near future society um, and he discovers that um, his dad who suddenly disappeared and everyone just thought he left several years ago or a couple years ago. Um, he had this thing, this object that then leads him to uh, find out that his dad went back in time. And so he goes back in time and the time he goes back to is a really, really long time ago, but it's actually a really far futuristic world. Um, and it's so bizarre. Um, but anyway, um, I will definitely have a full review of this book up um, soon. The Passions of Artemisia by uh, Susan Vreeland. This is about Artemisia Gentileschi, who um, was a painter in the Renaissance and she uh, was, you know, she's famous for also, you know, a rape trial um, that she was the victim of and she was the one more under investigation than her rapist, which is just BS. But anyway, so this is a really good historical fiction as well as being um, a really good example of how being a rape victim can actually 
mess up the rest of your life. Night of the Raven, Dawn of the Dove. This is about a girl who has been living with the royal family and she finds out one day that she's actually a hostage. She wasn't just adopted for, by them out of the goodness of their heart like she's a hostage. So it's so weird as she ends up being accused of conspiring against them which she never did because she never even like knew she was a hostage and it's just it's a really interesting book. It was really hard to get to. It was an absolute slog but I thought the whole idea was really really good um, and I thought it was really interesting. The Stars and the Blackness Between Them. This is about two queer black girls. Um, one is American and the other one moves to the U.S. from Trinidad and Tobago when um, uh, when her religious mother catches her with another girl. Um, and this was a really good book. It was really, really easy to get into, but um, it does have a really heavy cancer storyline, which I was not prepared for. I did not know this going into the book. Um, and finally, Front Desk by Kelly Yang. Um, I actually read the whole series, all four books, uh, but uh, mainly the first book. Um, it's about a girl who um, you who. Um, moves from China to the US and then um, it follows her two years later as she and her parents get jobs at a motel. She ends up working the front desk because her parents are uh, busy cleaning all the rooms and doing all the other chores basically. So whenever she's not at school she's at, she's working at the front desk and um, this whole and basically the guy they work for too who owns the motel like they think he's gonna be a cool guy because he's also an an Asian immigrant and everything but he's actually like racist as heck he uh, he doesn't like immigrants he takes everything that could possibly get broken or anything out of their pay even if they didn't break it or anything um, it's so insane and so the odds are like so stacked against them and it's just insane and it also goes into anti-blackness and how like a crime gets committed at the motel and automatically a black guy who lives there um, is uh, is accused even though he had nothing to do with it, was not on the scene, nothing. They literally, the cops literally judge him solely by the color of his skin. It's just insane. So, um, so it's basically about our main character, a 10 year old girl, like realizing all this stuff about the world. And it's so, so good. I loved this book so much. The rest of the series is also really worth the read. It really still tackles um, uh, issues like immigration and, um, and all kinds of like racism and everything but I felt like the first book especially was just so raw and so good and I was really surprised to see some of that in like a middle grade book and everything so anyway um so if you're looking for a middle a good middle grade or if you're just looking for a really good quick read to finish out the year with and everything like the the, the series is so good so anyway those are the books that I read in the second half of October I had a really good reading month and I hope you guys did too um thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you very very soon with a new video. Bye!